Hi, I'm Tom Mackey and welcome to Module 5, Understanding How Information is Packaged and Shared. And today we have two special guests, Anita Diciani brown and Sandra Barkovich. And I'm going to let Sandra and Anita introduce themselves. Anita? I'm Anita Diciani brown I am Empire State College's college-wide career development coordinator. I received my bachelor's degree in 2012 through um, SUNY Empire's Center for Distance Learning. And um, after that, I enrolled in the graduate program here at the college. I am just finishing up my master's degree in adult learning. And Sandra? And I'm Sandra Barkovich. I am an instructional support assistant with the Office of Academic Affairs. And I am also, uh, as part of my student hat, uh, the editor of the student newsletter. I have been for three years. I received my undergraduate degree in business management and economics through uh, the distance learning through Empire State College. And I am currently working on my uh, Master of Arts in Learning and Emerging Technologies. Uh, I am just getting toward the end. I'm on my last year coming up, so I'm very excited. That's great. Excellent. And the reason we've invited both Anita and Sandra today is that they're both very familiar with social media environments, and we'd like to have a sense of their experiencing these environments before college and sort of their, what they've learned since they've been in environments, they've been in programs that have really used this heavily in online courses and, of course, in a program about emerging and learning technologies. So if you could describe first, your, because I know that you're both using Facebook and Twitter, could you say a little bit about your experiences so far as uh, uh, someone who's participating in these environments and what that's been like? Um, on, from my perspective, um, I've used a lot of it um, both professionally and personally. Um, professionally, uh, I have maintained, in my previous career, I had um, used the social media in order to share information about um, uh, career development uh, suggestions, um, you know, different uh, information about resumes and cover letters and just overall tips. So um, what I really would do is go in and look at information, decide whether or not to share it with the student body, and then be able to um, share it. So you're kind of making decisions all the time about what the information was, how you're going to share it within any particular environment. Right, because, um, you know, as a represent, the, the sites were college sites. So um, in order to share the information, I didn't want to share information that somebody could later on come back and say, um, you know, this is wrong, uh, you know, possibly got in trouble for something. You really right. had to make sure that it was relevant information. And, um, you know, it, it really had the student's interest um, at heart. And did you see that professional use different from your own personal use? For example, using Facebook, uh, were you making the same kinds of decisions? or? And how did you separate out those, those different kinds of uh, uses, both professionally and personally? Um, I, you know, obviously you, you talk different ways, um, you know, on your different platforms. So, again, when I was a representative of the college um, posting things, I would speak in one, I'll call it a tone, um, you know, basically sharing some information. Sometimes it was, uh, you know, information about companies coming to campus, Again, you know, career development tips, and you know, and then on my personal side, I was a little more casual, but certainly um, I, I I felt that no matter what I would put up there, um, it really has to do as a representation of me. So I was very careful of what I shared. And Sandra, was your experience similar? And again, let's talk about this. Uh, be even before you started studying in these environments, mm -hmm. uh, what was your experience like? Uh, on your own, uh, discovering social media and using these kinds of resources? Well, um, it started very young, uh, before Facebook and, you know, the LinkedIn's and, and social media was actually a thing. Uh, but um, I remember when blogs came out and um, as a I had started writing fiction and um, even though I am not published yet, I've been working toward that and so all those many years ago, uh, one of the things that um, my network of people and, and co-authors and, and things understood was that if you can get your name out there and interact with a potential fan base, then um, you have a better shot of making it once your book actually comes out. Because now you've got a, people, a, a whole you know, slew of, of potential fans that are waiting for your book. They want to see 
and, and so they'll buy it when it comes out. So, you know, I started blogging and doing it with the thought that I would like to um, interact with my potential fan base. And so there was that aspect. Then, you know, as the years went by and I got into, you know, using Facebook and, and other types of social media, um, Anita is totally correct. You have to uh, be careful of what you put out there. And when you get so comfortable um, sharing things so quickly on something mm -hmm. like Facebook or Twitter, you, it, it's very easy to slip up and, and share something that maybe might not be the, put you, paint you in the best light. Um, and, and then what happens is once it's out there, <laughs> it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. It exists forever. And people actually search those things. And, and let's say you're looking for a job or something like that. So, um, you know, that, that's something that I was always cognizant of when I used social media, whether it was for my writing, I write romance. Um, it, that was a different life than my uh, searching for a job and, and things like that, posting my things on LinkedIn. However, I made a conscious decision. My writing life is with my own name. And so I understood that anybody looking for me and, and doing a search is going to also know that I'm a writer and I write dark paranormal romance right. and, you know, on the steamier side. So I had to understand, do I want people to know this? Mm -hmm. And how can that affect me going down the line? And I, I don't think that you have to um, omit everything, but you have to go into it with your eyes open. And, and that's a big thing. And, and then, you know, once I got into um, learning at a distance, uh, you know, th then it became something else where, you know, I interacted with my uh, fellow students. So even though I was learning at a distance, excuse me, as at, a, at a distance, I have um, friends that I've made in online courses that I've never actually met face to face, mm -hmm. but I've actually made very good friends with them and we contact each other and we, we exchange information. We, we've kept up, you know, um, over the years. We know about each other's families and we support each other at a distance and it's all through social media mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So it's really, um, I know in one of my classes I was introduced to, and it might have been the same class that we took together, uh, was Marshall McLuhan. Yes. and his views about the global village. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was touching on something that he had really no full concept. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think of him as like a prophet, <laughs> yeah. you know, talking about the future. And, um, but it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, here you meet people. I've got friends from Australia mm -hmm. and, and things like that that I have met in person because I've gone to conferences and things like that. But we can communicate instantly yes. with each other, and it's different. And it's interesting because in both of your uh, explanation of discussion of this, you really, it's clear that you saw yourselves as producers of information in these environments. You were very aware of the responsibilities that go along mm -hmm. with that uh, production, creation of information, and also having the ability to share. And in your case, Sandra, it's really interesting because what you were doing is in many ways leveling the playing field. So instead of looking for a traditional way of publishing, you really were publishing your, your, uh, your own writing in, in, in a different way. Uh, was, that, was that similar for you, Anita, too, that you saw yourself really as an active participant in these environments and you were willing to share information? Is that something you had thought of as you were uh, um, discovering this, this, you know, these online environments? One of the, um, the other roles that I've had um, as far as professional role um, is marketing. So, um, you know, I certainly understand the, um, the, the branding that goes into it, the importance of um, sharing information about keeping consistency with, um, you know, your business's vision. And um, I have seen uh, in one of the courses that I took um, in an undergrad, we had to develop uh, three ideas of um, potential business plans. And um, in one, um, which I, at the time I hadn't pursued, was actually to start a photography business. And the way that you can do that through social media. Well, once I finished my bachelor's degree, I decided, well, why don't I try doing that? And um, through, again, through social media, I was able to not only um, research information about um, photographers, um, you know, find out tips and, uh, and engage with others, ask advice to people that I've never met before, you know, like, 
um, Sandra said, there are um, people that she engaged with in Australia, and I was able to engage with people across the United States in, um, in, in several different countries and be able to get some feedback um, on both uh, visual critiques of my work because I was able to share it through um, you know, Facebook yeah. um, and, and some of the other uh, gallery sites and, um, you know, and, and be able to use it as a promotional tool mm -hmm. as well. And, and I think that you know, yeah, before one does that, they do have to have an understanding, um, a, a clear idea of what they are doing mm -hmm. um, because it can have both a positive and a negative um, impact. Um, I'd like to add to that a little bit um, because when you look at it from a marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> my background is customer service mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of companies are now turning to social mm -hmm. media um, to provide either provide actual customer service or um, when they see somebody posted something maybe not so flattering, um, they, they've got a couple of different avenues that they can take now. They can go ahead and, and address it properly and, and maybe try to fix the problem. Or if it's, you know, in customer service, the customer actually is not always right. Um, but there's a way to address that with them. Contrary to popular opinion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but there's a way to address that with them. And, and you can certainly work with the customer. And most people are understanding enough that if they see the other point of view then you know so you can address that properly or there are companies that don't address it properly mm -hmm. and they make their own faux pas when they reply angrily or put the customer down for whatever the response is or remove the posting um, and things like that so uh, there's a certain responsibility that both sides mm -hmm. need to take with social media and the use of it and so with marketing um, one of the things that um, I've been noticing a lot is uh, the recommendation that if you're going to use social media as a marketing tool, it shouldn't only be to say, hey, I've got this for sale. Right. Buy from me. Um, and I, one uh, suggestion I had seen was a 411 rule. So uh, you should post four uh, just non-sale things. Like mm -hmm. if, if you see something interesting you post about it, you like some you know, someone uh, else is posting that they're talking right. about. And then for every one uh, actual marketing item where you're trying to sell something or you're marketing an event, so you can do the 411 rule. And mm -hmm. there's other types of rules right. that are similar to that. But um, it's, it's not all about trying to the hard sell. Right. And social media can be very powerful because, and I've heard this said as well, um, it's easier to sell to a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, if they look at you as a friend, yep. they'll want to buy from you right. as opposed to the big conglomerate. So if you make friends, mm -hmm. like on Facebook, uh, then you are going to right. possibly build a, a better, uh, more reliable and uh, loyal customer base. And that sounds very similar to the project that you both worked on in graduate school mm -hmm. focused on self-marketing. So could you talk a little bit about that project, how that project emerged, and it led to a collaborative uh, project between the two of you that is now, it's available on, on YouTube, but in many ways it demonstrates this idea of packaging and sharing information and some of the responsibilities that go along with that, especially if you're marketing yourself and you're thinking about how to present yourself online, which is so important. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I can do is it, we'll, we'll take it in the, the pieces. So okay. um, you know, we had uh, we had met um, a couple of times to discuss you know mm -hmm. the idea, which was pretty quick for us to decide yeah. on a, on a topic, and then um, how we were going to break it down. And the the topic was personal branding. Um, I took it from the professional and career standpoint, um, and in that I did some research on um, the. The, the, the good pieces um, that you can use social media for, and then um, you know maybe things that people don't always think about, um, and and making sure that whatever is out there that you know people are aware. So um, in in looking up um, information, I really focused on um, you know your your professional not not professional look, but your uh, professional name mm -hmm. and um, you know what are things that can help enhance that so for example we've talked about blogs 
Um, you can, I, I know that um, both in undergrad and grad school, I had to keep logs. The undergrad, it was, um, you know, certainly cited sources, but um, there were, it was a little more um, uh, opinions, opinion based. Um, where in grad school, a lot of it was, okay, this is the, you know, question of the week for the module and, um, you know, basically, do you agree or disagree, support, your, support this idea right. through uncited um, um, sources. Right. So, um, you know, I would d decide on the topic for, the, for that module and write information um, based on my opinion of, of that. I wouldn't say that, um, you know, it presented me as an expert but it gave me an opportunity to show that yes, um, I do understand this concept and this is the reason why, this is my argument for why I support this. Um, you know, and it was out, it's out there, it's, I use um, right. tags, so right. you know, people can find the information. I did have a couple people that wrote to me um, you know, that came across it. Um, and being able to use social media platforms as a way to, um, maybe not promote yourself, but be able to engage yourself um, even for your career goals. Right. So I took it from the more um, individualistic, um, personal side of things. So, uh, it, you know, the counterbalance to the career and looking um, for a job there, uh, you know, a lot can be said for addressing um, the use and understanding of social media and the pitfalls um, at a much younger age, which, right. you know, a lot of very young children are using social media now, and they're not even at a, a cognitive level to understand the ramifications and the repercussions. Mm -hmm. You can tell them. They literally cannot understand what that really will mean for them later on. Um, not until they're older and they reach that level of cognitive development. Mm -hmm. And so what um, we did in our in the video was uh, you know in we we certainly spoke about um, the career side of things mm -hmm. and the professional aspect, but then we also talked about how to present yourself as a personal brand mm -hmm. uh, and how that will impact your career right. side of things. And so you know talking about you know drinking, mm -hmm. going out drinking with your buddies and mm -hmm. and posting those pictures with the red solo cup. Uh, it's not always so good. And right. um, I was uh, actually talking with Anita about that project recently, mm -hmm. and we were saying how that there was uh, an article that I had just the other day read. Um, uh, colleges have come out mm -hmm. to say, and we suspected this always, mm -hmm. and this is why we kind of chuckled over this, um, they've actually come out and officially said that they have looked at especially athletic candidates that they would have liked to recruit for their, co their college right. And yet, the second they saw that their social media decisions weren't quite what they were looking for, they stopped pursuing them. Mm -hmm. And so here is, you know, high schoolers, and younger even, um, who have now, without even realizing it, completely cut their chances of right. something huge in mm -hmm. their lives, monumental. It's, it's life changing. And so that's where we have to start looking at things, you know, from right. a much earlier standpoint. Yeah, I had seen that article as well, and I, this is happening also in, in companies too. Yes. When people go on job interviews, and I'm sure you're in, yes, working they, in career uh, development, you're, they, you're aware of that. Um, the one thing that you should do, um, probably I would say, at least six months before you start a job search, is to Google yourself. Mm -hmm. um, because the information that is out there once you create the electronic trail and that electronic trail happens when somebody likes a picture and they comment on a picture um, once it's there and there's been some type of engagement somebody has seen it right. and you don't know who has seen it and how that information can be used um, in, in, in a negative way however right. there's also a positive way too um, there are there are certainly positive ways of engaging. Um, you know, I, I I think that people just need to um, like like we said have a, a, a firm understanding of what you are sharing. Right. And it's not just what you're sharing; it's what other people are sharing. Yeah. Right. So, so yes, it goes out if you're at a party available. and you're right. acting crazy at the party, somebody else you didn't take any pictures, you mm -hmm. didn't post it, but your friend posted it. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's out there. And, and you may not even know that it's out there. Mm. Right. So. so let me ask this question, and this is bringing it back to the, the meta-literacy model a little bit. Uh, in your experience then, because clearly you've been participants in these environments, you've been creators of information, you've been sharing information, you have a very good understanding of all the responsibility that goes along with this. In your view, do those pieces of it, which are really central to meta-literacy, um, what kind of learning is taking place by being in those active roles? I mean, that's very different than mm -hmm. reading about a topic or reading about social media. You're actually engaging, you're producing. You're learning new technologies, too, as you're going along. So you really have to adapt to this because we know that Facebook is always changing. There's always mm -hmm. going to be another kind of interface. So from your point of view, uh, what kind of, what are the benefits of that learning? That's, what, what kind of learning is taking place? And have you noticed that yourselves in, in your own active roles in these environments? Um, I, I think that some areas that um, I, I, I find is that I'm reading a lot more information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, there have been times that I'm going to, you know, resort to the uh, comfort and casualness of Facebook. So, um, you know, somebody may um, share maybe a political post mm -hmm. or um, you know, not necessarily a political post, but a, a post that includes a, a blog. Right. Um, you know, I, I've, I actually had an engagement with a, um, a, a good friend of mine um, that had shared information and I read it and then I actually, re so I, I then went to Google and I started looking at the um, AP sites and I looked at, um, you know, the, the national, um, you know, uh, media sites mm -hmm. to try and find this particular story. And I couldn't. So <laughs> then I, you know, I, I actually went back and I said, um, you know, I, I, in a private message to her and I said, I, I really think that you should think about what you're sharing here. I'm not saying you have to change your political view. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that what you're sharing isn't really accurate, right. and um, you know it, it just kind of looks a little foolish. Right. Um, and you know, after a while, um, she went and she did her own research. And I said, you know, I just want you to understand that if I were to hand this in as a paper right now, because anybody can create a blog, right. and that's what it was. It was somebody's blog. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can create a blog, mm -hmm. but there was no cited sources. It was not a true story. Right. So, um, you know, I, if I handed this in as a, um, as a paper, I would get an F. So I, I think from one of the things that I've done is when I will um, share something or engage, I really try to be informed in the best way that I can. Yeah. That's a great, exa great examples. They are excellent. Um, I, I worked for a backbone internet service provider and I worked in their uh, net abuse team. And basically, we uh, tracked hackers and crackers and also spammers and things like that. And, and so right from the very beginning, uh, you know, this was many years ago, the internet was just starting to really take off. It was starting to boom long before, like I said, yeah. social media. There was no Facebook <laughs> at the time. Um, but one of the things that we learned to do is, is to verify information mm -hmm. through sites like Snopes mm -hmm. and, and things like that. There's urban legends that go all mm -hmm. over the internet and they travel like wildfire. Mm -hmm. My husband and I uh, joke many, many years ago, he had written um, this totally fake piece just as a joke for a, a local news um, newsletter that he had written for. And he had talked about radioactive nickels that were made from metal that had come from like Chernobyl or something like that. and that. If uh, you had these between this date and this date, they were dangerous and they could cause issues. You keep them in your pocket. Um, you should send all your nickels to this address. And he made it sound so real right. and, and things. But people, like you said, mm -hmm. they read that. And because it sounded so legitimate, and mm -hmm. he had fake numbers right. for the you know, yeah, right. CDC and, right. and yeah. government, and it, people would have taken that. And there probably would have been a place where a bazillion nickels were now sent because people were panicking. Right. And so, you know, it's very, very important to, to check that information. And that's something that I've learned and, and altered my view. Um, you know, you never take anything at face value on right. the internet. Mm -hmm. And that gets to the packaging piece, too, because you could create something that looks, that looks completely professional, oh. but it, it's not. 
Uh, and that's again why it's so important then to uh, teach people to be more critical readers of this information. Mm -hmm. One other aspect I'll, I'll ask is this dimension of uh, collaboration and peer review. And because so many of the examples and what you're talking about is really what you learn from each other and also how you in many ways play the role of teacher in these environments, because uh, it's a very decentered uh, environment. Have you, in your own experience, have you thought about that, about how, uh, and do you see the collaborative piece of that as very important? Because you're, again, you're not just reading information, you're really interacting, you're participating, you're, you're gaining insights from other, other users mm -hmm. in th these environments. So how important is that collaborative dimension? Um, for me, it, it, again, I'll, I know I will be able to say um, on the professional level, but then even on the personal level, um, I, I look at information and I decide, is this something that I want to share? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when I'm sharing something, it is because I endorse mm -hmm. the, um, I'm not going to call it a product, but I endorse um, the brand, the, the, the person, um, whatever I'm sharing, I, I just have, I feel a connection to. And I'll, right. you know, I'll even use SUNY Empire State as, as an example. Right. Um, you know, I've only been here as a month, um, or for a month as an employee, but I have um, you know, shared all of the wonderful work of the college uh, for, for many years. And um, I, at the same time, I also use that to be able to share, um, not only as a post, but interact with others and share the information and, and you know, try and promote um, you know, uh, to other students. Mm -hmm. Same thing at, um, with businesses. So I, I really take a good look at, um, from that angle, what I am sharing. And you know, I, I feel that whatever people are um, looking at, you know, I'll, I'll look at a, a friend's post, and I sometimes will take that as an endorsement of a, right. of a, of a product, of um, something to read, as um, you know, a, a new restaurant to try. Um, so I, I really I find the value with that. But then I also, um, you know, looking at the, the sharing of social media on a professional level, it is, again, whatever um, I am sharing, I am sharing as a voice of that business. Right. So I have to make sure that I have a firm understanding of what the organization's mission is before I'm sharing the information. Because again, whatever you're putting out there can come back and, and somebody could say, well, you gave me the wrong advice. Right. Excellent point. So I'm going to take it from a, a different aspect and um, with the whole entire collaboration and learning and teaching. Um, certainly for my online courses, there is, uh, you know, the discussion mm -hmm. section uh, portion of it. And uh, there, you can look at it as you're just reading what other people are posting and uh, that's interesting and move on. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at what they're saying and understand and, and equate it to what you understand about life and, mm -hmm. and your expectations and things and, and maybe understand a different point of view um, and, and use that. And that's one of the things that I was introduced to and uh, I talk about it all the time in my undergraduate program, uh, one of my courses. Up until that time, I had never really given any thought to critical thinking mm -hmm. proactively. Um, so then there, uh, we were introduced to Bloom's taxonomy and, and things to get you to that higher level of thinking. And uh, suddenly I was looking at things differently. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then you know, you, you're not just knowing and understanding, you are now synthesizing things and, and, and equating them to what's meaningful to you in life. So the collaboration, I think that aspect is, is one of the most powerful tools when you're talking about whether it's social media or any kind of digital communication uh, back and forth, there, there's always something to learn. Whether mm -hmm. it's learning what to do or what not to do, mm -hmm. right. it's there. And there's always a teaching or a learning opportunity at all times. Mm -hmm. Excellent points. Both of you have been great. Uh, I'm so glad that you uh, were part of this interview today. The name of this course is Empowering Yourself in a Connected World, and I think you both uh, demonstrate that in, in your understanding and your insights. So thank you so much for being here today. And again, thank you.